The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, well, Image Comics, I think, has... I, you know, I, so I've had this conversation with people before, and Image is a, is a weird thing. This would be a good one to have with Joe Casey or um, Sean Murphy or, you know, ideally some people who publish through Image. Because when I have this conversation, people l tell me that, you know, well, Image Comics has kind of always been the way it is now. But that's not my perception. And I'm, I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong. But when Image Comics was founded, there was a certain aspect to, you know, how, how, the, how it was done and what, you know, the people coming from uh, Marvel, some kind of superstar artist, graded some books. We want the creators to be more in charge. Um, but it's evolved to being a little bit of something else. And um, in, in, in terms that I would use in other businesses, I would say it's a holdings company. So a holdings company, if I can kind of at a five thousand, you know, thirty thousand, hundred thousand, a, a very high level, I would say it's a company that provides infrastructure support, sometimes funding, um, common services, usually finance, legal, uh, other pieces, to a variety of businesses that are, you know, maybe too small to stand on their own, or maybe want the benefit of focus for their industry, and so they they kind of leave the other pieces to this this holdings company. Now, you, you may be confusing this with online services like kind of shared legal or shared finance, uh, which, you know, some smaller comic companies certainly use. But this isn't like that. This is more along the lines of true infrastructure. And the holdings company, uh, you know, owns these smaller companies kind of almost outright. I mean, they, they're, you know, they, there's a chance always holdings company can spin something out or sell it to someone else. Um, kind of like a, you know, a, is an investment company might, uh, but they are pretty, you know, manic, religious, uh, however you want to say it about, um, you know, return. So, you know, successful holding companies don't have a bunch of incubated kind of goofball ideas going on. They, they tend to go for businesses that have a proven track record of return. They're trying to penetrate a market, expand it and overall grow their influence. Um, holdings companies are a little bit more prevalent and pure overseas, uh, particularly in, in Asia. There's this, the concept of a holdings company is a pretty common one and it's a, it's a relatively big deal, uh, there. And it's, it's how a lot of people go to market. So when I look at image comics today, in many cases, I see a lot of similarities between a holdings company and what image does. So Image gives a lot of the services where a creator can come, uh, can basically get a book done. Now, it does have to be approved, and just like Holdings Company, Image, Image is looking to maintain kind of the quality of their line. They're, they're at least curating it the way they see fit. It's not just an open free-for-all for anyone. And then they're providing some of the central services. One of the key ones is distribution, you know, how it's going to get to market, and, you know, some lightweight promise of marketing, which, I, I mean, I, I don't know, people say, you know, a, a big benefit of image is marketing, but that's not my, I, I don't know. It's not, it's not marketing. Like I would say it's marketing. Um, but this is kind of what it does. And I, I don't believe that's how image started. I think that's not the intent, but it's kind of how it's involved. And so I'll read this mail, which is asking about image comics and they're using a different name. They're, they're, they're using something I, I don't think is, 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 you know, the right term, which is a shell company. I don't think it's, I think that's, that's incorrect. Shell company is typically somebody who's got a bigger business underneath it. And there's some kind of thing on the top that is a distraction from the bigger business. Usually shell companies are doing something dodgy or illegal in a lot of cases, but anyway, let's read this mail and then you'll see how all these things tie together. It says perch. I've listened to your videos on distribution and how comic companies need to be better at it. I've noticed a soft piggy bank, uh, piggyback, soft piggyback, piggyback. It's always about money with me. I noticed a stop piggyback on distribution of comics with some companies using image comics, i.e. Skybound, which is more of Kirkman line in image. But you have the massive verse, Radiant Black, Rogue Sun, Dead Lucky, doing its own connected universe, but publishing through image. And now the announcement of Ghost Machine. Uh, it's worth noting that Rick Remender is also uh, announcing uh, his kind of imprint through image. 
Uh, it's clever creators are using Image Comics like a shell company for their lines, but it feels like short-term gains and still no long-term success are being bigger in the comic market, hitting 100,000 sales or wider markets than the comic shop like manga besides Hollywood pitches. Um, so that's the mail. So if I unpack that a little bit, um, you know, here's the, the idea of what Image is doing. Basically, if you're Kirkman, and you're trying to focus creatively on a line. You're trying to get good quality books. You're trying to attract good editors and other things. Then, you know, the go-to-market aspect of it, some of the finance, some of the legal aspects, uh, you're going to need your own lawyer, of course, all the rest. But some of these common services, distribution, and marketing, we'll get back more to marketing in a moment, it makes a lot of sense to use a holdings company or, you know, a brand like Image, which has, you know, some pretty decent brand equity to, you know, basically take care of those things so you can have the best possible that's just a headache you'll need to worry about for your line the drawbacks are you're beholden to image but if you're a big name you know if you are a jeff johns if you are a kirkman if if you are a uh, you know a rick Remender, then you have a name in this industry you're gonna show up and image is gonna work with you i mean that's the the i don't know the unspoken secret in all this is Image Comics are curating their lines, and they certainly take chances on lesser-known creators, but, you know, not many chances. If you are a big-name creator, or put it this way, if you, if you were Scott Snyder, and you woke up this morning, and you're like, I want to do a shared universe through Image, um, you can do that pretty, pretty easy. Um, it will, they, they, all you basically have to do is show up and say, I have an idea for a shared universe, here's what I'm going to do, I want to publish in, in July. The Image Comics, uh, you know, leadership are not going to look at you and go, well, I don't know. You're going to need to sell us on that pitch. They're, they're not going to do that. Same thing with, uh, if, you know, Sean Murphy recently published uh, his Zorro book. If he wanted to publish that through Image, it, no problem. That would have been, uh, that would not have been an issue. He could have done it. Uh, he all, again, he basically shows up. I've got Zorro. I'm going to publish this. Image is like, okay, when do we take it? Um, if you are me, you know, and I show up and I'm like, Hey, I've got a shared universe idea. They're, they're going to go, Hey, get lost. Or I'm going to spend, you know, four years trying to convince them that my idea is a good one. And, uh, they're going to, you know, constantly bump me for big name creators. By the way, I, I don't, I don't think that's necessarily wrong. You know, their business try to make money. So it makes sense, but you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a difference in how they work. Again, it's like a holdings company is not going to take some guy off the street to invest in and put some resources behind. Now, the flaw, though, in Image is that I don't think, to, to the male's point, I, you know, are these comics reaching 100,000? Um, I don't think anybody at Image is either promising or even believes it's possible to get a lot of these books to that level. If a huge name creator walks in the door you know, Jeff Johns is doing his thing and Jeff Johns is like, yeah, I've got these artists signed up and I'm going to do a big deal and I'm going to get these variant covers going. Um, you know, Jeff Johns might say, I'm going to shoot for a hundred thousand and image will be like, hot oh, damn. Yeah, we'll support that. That sounds great. But people at image are not going, Hey, we've got secret sauce here at image. It sounds gross, but we've got secret Portland sauce. It still sounds gross. We've got, um, a way that through multiple distribution channels and much stronger marketing, we're going to do things in a uniquely different way. We're going to bring value to these lines coming in that you can't get anywhere else. You know, you can't get it if you go to Dark Horse or Massive or any of these other companies. You you only get, you know, we get, we do things at Zoop or other, you know, crowdfunding yourselves or through Kickstarter. We do things that nobody else can do. So, you know, work through us. Um they don't, they don't offer things like that. They do offer some, some shared benefit and they basically offer like image is the number three company. That's kind of their pitch. We're the numbers. And by the way, it's not a horrible pitch. The problem is it's constrained within the existing market. So comic, you know, if, if basically your goal is to sell a comic through your LCS, then going to image is a benefit because what's going to happen is the retailer when they're ordering comics, they're going to go to Marvel, they're going to order their books, they're going to DC and order some books, and they're going to go to image and order some books. You talk to any local comic shop, 98% of them are doing exactly what I just said in that order. And so if you're trying to get your comic out, you know, and your choice is, hmm, do I want to go publish through, uh, 
you know, a massive or do I want to publish through an image? Well, you're going to go through image. If your goal is purely to get higher up in the thought process of the, uh, you know, of the retailer. So if you're a massive or you're, you know, a, a dark horse, or you're somebody else, you basically got to convince the creators coming to you that, no, 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 we will give you more to make up for the fact that we are not the number three publisher. You know, we, we will do this extra marketing. We've got these different things that we bring to the table. That's what they've got to do. But the bigger question for image is why isn't image doing more of that? So, I mean, short answer is they don't have money to invest to, to really build up a lot of these capabilities. And images, as you saw during the diamond fiasco and other things, largely beholden to the industry they're in. So if image suddenly goes out there and says, yeah, we're going to get a deal goal with target. You get a bunch of comics going there and, and, you know, as a brand, we think we have the market power to do that. Well, guess what? Reality is image does. If image puts some biz dev effort toward, you know, a big box store like Target, uh, they could probably get some books flowing through there. And, you know, there's things to go along with it. They have to figure out what returnability looks like and all that other stuff, but they could do it. And, uh, but, you know, if they do that, then, you know, Diamond, a lot of their kind of, you know, the, you're, you're suddenly the, the hate articles will get written about how they're all sociopaths and, you know, why are they, why are they cheating the, you know, the, the retailer? And there's just going to be all this bullshit that's going to come out of there that Image doesn't want to do. You know, the, the unfortunate reality is that Image as a company is largely satisfied with being exactly what they are, the number three comic company. They're, they're, they've got their trajectory set. They understand their costs. They understand what they're doing. You know, they've got the union in there. I, I've heard that union is, has continued to whittle away in members, but I don't know. That, that's what I've heard. It's, I get like a lot of things. You put a lot of, uh, people, people yelled and screamed, put a lot of, uh, commentary behind it. And then it turned out it was, you know, less, you know, maybe, maybe even one hand, not two hands at this point, but it, you know, it, it, like a lot of things, it, it, it winds up not mattering other than it makes a bunch of noise. But this isn't a video about the union. But my point is, you know, to be a proper holdings company, you know, and it, it, shell company is the wrong word, but do it, you know, you want to go push for big business and the, the you know, the parent or the, the holdings part of the company needs to bring pretty extreme value. And, you know, today a lot of that value is, you know, image as a name. So what this also means is if a comic company came up and had a relatively smart person in charge of it who was exploring these other options. It largely ignored a lot of the nonsense and the legacy in comics and had a fairly big bank behind them. They could, you know, it, people ask me all the time, like, what would it take to be the number four, number three, number two comic company? Surprisingly little. Honestly. Crack distribution, get some money behind it, don't have a lunatic in charge, and whatever you do, do not have people in your leadership team who are existing members of the comic industry who are going to basically drag you kicking and screaming back to the 1970s in terms of how it all works. Um, you know, to hard ignore all of the weird troublemakers who exist purely to sell the, you know, serve their own self-interest. And you probably can take that pretty quickly. You know, what would it take for somebody to knock off image as the, the number three company? Uh, very little. And to kind of prove it out, you know, I know that uh, back in the, you know, a couple of years ago, people started including a lot of the manga sales numbers, what Biz was doing and others in the, uh, in the overall charts. Um, I'd be really curious if you truly want to do an apples to apples comparison and you truly want to include all those sales. Uh, you know, who, who's, got a, who's got a better profit margin revenue stream right now? You know, some of these uh, manga importers or image. Um, I'm willing to bet it's the first one. But, you know, when it comes time to, uh, you know, to say who are the big comic companies, uh, you know, suddenly the inclusion of manga into the number stops. It's, 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 wild. it's wild how that happens. But anyway, I, I mean, image's power right now is that they can safely call themselves number three. And they're going to hold on to as long as they can because if and when that goes away, you know, what they offer as holdings company is actually very little, to be honest. And uh, then it starts to become more, you know, more noticeable that their success is purely dependent on the people coming to them. I mean, Kirkman coming to them and running comics through the pipes there is, you know, is the value. And so who holds it? Image, the holdings company, or Kirkman? And the answer is Kirkman. 
So yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it all evolves, but but there you go. Thank you very much for the mail. You can always write into the show. The way to write into the show is literally in the description of every video that I publish. Happy to answer those questions, and thanks for listening. <laughs>